morning this is Vicki with Vicki Woo marketing and usually I bring you a lot of marketing strategy marketing tips marketing focus and advice but with Thanksgiving being less than a week away I wanted to focus today on gratitude and thanks this is Vicki Wu, and as always we're talking about the best tips for marketing your small business. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to be notified of the latest updates. And I'm going to share you a couple tips on focusing on that gratitude and then share with you a few things that I'm personally thanks, thankful for. Even yes, in 2020, which has been kind of a crazy year for all of us, there's still things that we're all very thankful for. And I think focusing on those is what kind of helps us navigate the confusing waters of 2020. One of the first things is that you need to regularly express gratitude. And people talk about a like having a gratitude journal. And I always kind of felt guilty because I had placed the expectation on myself that I needed to do that daily. And you know how you know life happens and work happens and I never got around to doing it daily and I always felt so guilty. But one of the most important things to understand is that you don't have to do it daily. It's more important to do it with some kind of regularity than to try to force upon yourself to do it daily. And yes, there's things I'm grateful for every day, but actually writing it down isn't something that I always do. So I've gotten rid of that guilt. People who study gratitude and giving thanks have said that one to three times a week is more than enough to actually make it work for you and improve your life through expressing gratitude. So if you've had that same feeling of guilt and not doing this daily, I give you permission to release it, and even if you don't get around to doing it weekly, that's okay too. My planner that I use, and it's actually a rocket book, and if you haven't checked into those, they're pretty cool because the pages are all reusable, and I don't have to waste a lot of paper and you know cut down a lot of trees to do it, but it has on the weekly planning page that I have in there where I express gratitude for something from the past week. So that's kind of how I do mine. There's also things you can do, for example, a client of mine actually has a gratitude meditation app. I'll link that down in the description so you can find that if you want to. It's a free app, but Using something like that can help you focus in on gratitude. Even if you're not writing it down, it can still help you bring that focus to celebrating what is good in your life. They also, they, the experts, also recommend that when you think through or write down or whatever you're doing, that gratitude that you elaborate in detail. Yes, you can just kind of think in passing, today I'm grateful for X, Y, Z, but when you really elaborate and dig down into it, it kind of cements that gratefulness in your mind, which is what benefits you over the long term. And they also recommend that you focus more on people versus things. And sometimes you're still going to focus on things and that's okay, but we want to make sure that we're expressing gratitude for the people around us, especially, let's face it right now, 2020, during COVID pandemic, a lot of us have been kind of staying at home more. Possibly everybody's working at home, wife, husband, kids, you all may be squished together a little bit more than usual. And, you know, people get on your nerves. That's how it is, you know? Kids get on your nerves. Parents get on kids' nerves, spouses get on each other's nerves. It happens. And so remembering to express that gratitude for people is really important. Now that I've told you kind of how to express your gratitude, I want to share with you a few things that I'm thankful for in 
celebration of Thanksgiving, which will occur before my next episode of the podcast. So first, of course, always spouse, kids, and family, my extended family. They are my why. And so I'm always grateful for them. I'm always proud of them and what they're doing. And they just make my life. And the grandkids. I've got grandkids now. I've got two. Got another one on the way. They're all cute. They are the smartest, cutest grandchildren in the history of the world. I'm not biased at all. So that's just how it is. Also grateful for my clients. I love helping businesses thrive. It's my other why. I love helping entrepreneurs grow their dreams. And to me, it's a privilege to be able to do so and even the people all of you you know listening you're not paying me you're not you know directly what you would consider a client or a customer in that sense that there's been some kind of transaction but i still appreciate all of you for listening to the message for giving likes and thumbs up and sharing because that helps me spread it further so thank you for that as well also work in general of course, it's how we survive. So having work, doing work, always grateful for that. And here in 2020, a lot more people have been working at home. I've worked from home for quite a few years. So for me, this year wasn't a big difference, but I know for a lot of people who haven't worked from home before, getting to do that can be such a privilege as well because it lets you the, the commute time is gone so it actually gives you more hours in a day and things like your lunch hour where previously if you were stuck in an office maybe you had to drive somewhere get your food drive back the whole hour yeah it's you know focused on you you're refueling your body but when you're at home and especially if your family, some of your family's at home, that's some additional time that you can either take for yourself or take it with your family. And so that's really great. Just the commute alone. I've always felt blessed when at my last corporate position, I got to start working from home because they moved their company headquarters. I already had a three hour round trip every day. And the move would have made it, it was about two hours one way, especially in Dallas traffic. And that would have made it impossible. And so I was allowed to start working from home, which I really appreciated. And just regaining that extra three hours a day was amazing. And then plus, I've found that when you're working physically in an office, you're not really able to do this, but working from home, I do, there's a strategy called time blocking that you've probably heard of. It's like, I think it's 20 minutes on, 10 minutes off, or five minutes off. That strategy wasn't quite right for me at home, so I do 90 minutes on and an hour off. And I got into that to remove the guilt of that hour and doing things either for the house, you know, chores around the house, cooking my own lunch, whatever that might be, taking time for myself, whether that's just relaxing a bit or doing some yoga or a quick workout or just, you know, watching a TV episode. Like, I love things like The Amazing Race. And so that hour to do things for me outside of the business and that hour may even be focused on being creative for the business not working on day-to-day -day activities but things that excite me to like move it forward that's still exciting for me and it still work but it's kind of that concept so working from home gives me that ability to put my day in chunks of time which wouldn't work the same if you're in a corporate office setting. So if you've got to experience that working from home, you probably understand what I'm talking about. Also grateful for health, especially this year with COVID. I was, I, I had that nasty sickness way back at the beginning. Don't wish it on anyone. 
But after recovering from the months of exhaustion that followed that, I'm feeling a lot better than I have in a long time. And so I'm really grateful to have that health. And along that lines, I'm going to switch over to a little bit about technology and how it's helping. So I'm grateful to have the technology that's allowing a few of these things, especially while we're going through a pandemic. My husband bought the Oculus Quest. So it is the virtual reality headset and it's fun. It's, it's games, you know, you're playing video games, but one of the ones that I found in there is actually a daily workout. And so you put it on, you're in some place beautiful because they always have great scenery around you, but you're playing a game, you know, kind of like with lightsabers or, you know, bats and balls, whatever you want to consider it. And you're doing squats and lunges. And I can go through a 20 minute workout in that and like have a ton of fun. Like I'm playing a game, you know, it's great. But I actually like, you know, I'm, I'm sweating and my muscles are being used in ways that if I was just sitting there kind of doing that same workout without it being in a game, you know, if I'm just standing there doing squats and lunges, you still get it done, but it's not fun. So this Oculus Quest is actually one of the things I do in my time chunking during my, you know, hour for me, I'm getting in there and playing a game and is working me out, making me healthier. Maybe I'll get rid of that 20 pounds we've all put on during COVID. I don't know. We'll see. Also, technology has allowed us some creative ways to connect remotely and stay in touch with people. So I'm kind of grateful that we have that ability. You know, right here on this this podcast, you know, connecting with you and connecting with family remotely, even connecting with, you know, clients and coworkers and peers and things like that. Really great that we have that capability to do it. Also, the pandemic has, I was kind of forced to set aside one hobby, my ballroom dancing. But during that time, I revisited another hobby, which is my artwork. And I've even done some commission pet portraits for some people on the side, which been, has been fun because I enjoy painting. They enjoy getting it. It's all been good. So the kind of pivot to, I can't do one hobby that I really love, but I can work on another one right now. And as you see, I've been pretty prolific at it. It's going good up there on the wall. <laughs> another thing, uh, we moved at the beginning of this year, of course, and normally I'd be concerned that I'm not completely finished unpacking, organizing, and purging. We downsized, so there's still a little bit of that going on. I do have some, you know, boxes stacked over against the wall. I try to hide them against the wall in one spot. But I'm also able to kind of release the guilt that it's not done because nobody's coming here anyway. (laughs) So it's all good, you know? My boxes are in the corner. I mean, we've had a couple of repairmen in, but they're never going to see me or my house again. So I don't care that there's boxes in the corner. For the most part, you know, 99.9% of it is done, but it's not done enough yet to where it's not where I want it to be. But I'm glad that the pandemic has made it that I don't have to worry about that. I have no guilt, so it's all good. I also like that move has put us back in a condo again because my husband's job had transferred us across the country a couple times within a you know two year span. I think we moved one, two, three, four, five. This move here made five in two years and I hate packing and moving. We were in apartments Now we're in a condo again, which means I can decorate. I can paint walls. I can put railings up on the wall to hold my artwork. I can, you know, paint cabinets in the kitchen, whatever it is, I can make it feel more like mine than I was able to do at places before. So I'm grateful that we're back in a place that's, you know, kind of our home. Also, 
We live on a golf course and off our back balcony, we've got a great view. And not to mention that 99% of the time it's pretty quiet and peaceful other than some neighbors who have their issues. But I go out on that back patio and I can just look at nature. Somebody else is mowing it. I don't have to, which is great. And just really enjoy being there in nature in a really peaceful setting. And plus, if you've seen some of the things I've shared, we've got these ducks that visit us now. We've, you know, trained them that we're going to give them food. I buy duck food for these silly ducks. And for a while, there was a pretty good flock of them, about 9 to 11, that would come a day visiting. Now there's two. There's one that he's kind of been there all along, and now he's bringing his little chosen wife, and they come every day, at least twice a day, sometimes three times, I guess, how hungry they are. They come in the morning around 7.30 a.m. for breakfast. They come again around 5 p.m. for dinner. Sometimes they stop by for lunch, and sometimes they hang out in the general area pretty much all of the day. So that's kind of cool is, I don't have a dog, but I have a duck, <laughs> and I've named it. I haven't named the wife yet, but the, the male's named Randy, and I'll let you figure out why. <laughs> and then also, I like my plants, and in the past, I tended to kill them because I don't get around to taking care of them like they should, and I always say they need to be outside and let God take care of them, and if he wants them to die, that's what happens. But my plants are on the patio, and they love this weather. It's kind of more tropical. It's humid. The humidity helps keep them a little bit more hydrated in a way, and my plants are just flourishing, which is pretty cool because while I'm sitting on my balcony enjoying the view of the golf, co golf course and the ducks, and the really loud blue jays that come and eat my plants, I still get to enjoy it. And it's calming. And the place that I pop out to during some of those breaks, my time chunking breaks, I'll pop out there and maybe in the morning have a cup of coffee, maybe eat lunch there, whatever it is, and kind of just enjoy. So it's just a few of the things that I'm thankful for, practicing my gratitude and kind of putting it out there in preparation for Thanksgiving. And I'd be really interested to hear something that you're grateful for. What is it? What have you learned to be grateful for this year in 2020 while we've been kind of quarantining during the pandemic? Even that has had great things come out of it. So share it with me, please, and let me know what you're grateful for. Just put it down in the comments or Visit the website like you just like you do for the marketing questions. Visit the website vickywoo.us and down in the bottom right corner there's a chat bubble icon and you can share your gratitude with me there. Since I probably won't talk to you before Thanksgiving, I want to wish you and your family a wonderful holiday. I know we all have plenty to be thankful for and I wish you the best. And I will see you next time right here.